In 2007, Prime Minister John Howard and his minister Mal Bruff declared a state of emergency in the Northern Territory, but they applied it only to black Australians. Known as the intervention, its aim, they said, was to save Aboriginal children from pedophiles. But there was a hidden agenda. It is interventionist. It does push aside the role of the, of the Territory to some degree. I accept that, but what matters more? The constitutional niceties or the care and protection of young children. Laying the ground for the intervention was a lurid media campaign led by a national TV program called Lateline. Lateline claimed that Aboriginal children were the victims of sex slavery. The program's allegations centred on the community of Mutajulu. A key witness was this man, whose identity was disguised. They called him a former youth worker. The people who are in control are the drug dealers and the petrol warlords and the pedophiles. There was no sex slavery, no petrol warlords, no pedophile rings. The anonymous witness was actually a senior government official who had worked in Mutajulu but never lived there. The Late Line program was exposed by investigative journalist Chris Graham, founder of the National Indigenous Times. In 2006, Late Line began reporting that sexual abuse in Aboriginal communities was rampant and that um, Aboriginal men were violent and uh, beating and abusing women and children on a, on a scale that can't be believed. And it was that style of extraordinary sensationalist reporting um, that paved the way for the federal government to introduce policies that, frankly, uh, Australians uh, haven't seen. I mean, the anonymous youth worker, in fact, was this government official called Gregory, Gregory Andrews. Andrews. And he claimed that he'd actually lived there for seven months. He hadn't lived there a single night. He'd never stayed overnight in Mutajulu in his life. I've been told by a number of people of men in the region who go to other communities and get young girls and bring them back to their community and keep them there as sex slaves. The funniest thing was seeing um, Greg Andrews or seeing this man in a hat and a jumper that I knew was his hat and his jumper, and seeing him sitting there talking in this robotic voice about stuff that he had known about this community or seemingly known about this community. And I'm sitting there watching going, is that Greg? And it was. And, and, who, then, was, and who did you know Greg to be? So Greg Andrews was my boss in the, Depart in the Office of Indigenous Policy Coordination. He was the assistant secretary, the branch manager. So he was a, government, a senior government official? Yes, yes. He made all sorts of bizarre claims. He, he, he made a claim that uh, he knew of or he had heard of uh, children being held in communities against their will and traded uh, amongst communities by Aboriginal men as sex slaves. Mm. Uh, he claimed that he'd seen women coming to meetings with broken arms and screwdrivers and other implements hanging out of their legs. Was there any substance at all in any of these claims? Zero. I mean, none, none at all. I asked the man in the hat, Gregory Andrews, for an interview, but he declined. The Minister for Indigenous Affairs, Mal Bruff, looking at the evidence, quote unquote, that the program had produced about so-called paedophile rings, hmm. said that child abuse was happening in unthinkable numbers. Extraordinary thing to say, wasn't it? Extraordinary, particularly in the context that he knew uh, the anonymous former youth worker on the ABC program was actually his advisor. To me, that was indicative of, of a complete lack of good faith in the production of the program. Because if they couldn't get someone more, more objective than that, mm. uh, it's, it must, to those who are making the program, have made them at least think that there was a possible problem, more than a possible problem. Mm. And yet they just went ahead with it. The Australian Crime Commission, which you set up and gave special powers to, mm -hmm. found no evidence. The Northern Territory Police found no evidence. Umpteen reports since then, frankly, 
have found no evidence. Well, that and is I'll reel them off to you if you'd like feel to. Feel free. Think. Factually incorrect. So what they have found is that well, they the can... Australian Crime Commission were lying. Uh, the Northern Territory Police had got it wrong. Is that it? The reality is, is that when they went into these communities, they couldn't find the people that would substantiate <clears throat> the evidence. They will tell you that there is any amount of inescapable evidence, such as STD of children at a very young age. Mm. And I have personally spoken to parents and relatives who can identify the individuals, but they won't. You accused Aboriginal communities and all Aboriginal communities, not just Mutajulu, of harbouring paedophile rings. First mm. of all, there was uh, an independent uh, report put together, inquiry put together by the Northern Territory Labor Government. They visited 45 mm. distinct separate Aboriginal communities in the Northern Territory mm. and they found evidence of child sexual abuse in every single community. Mr Brough totally, completely misrepresented Little Children Are Sacred and used it in a very um, crude way to his own ends. Why would um, the minister want to say such a thing? Because it's just not true. I don't, mm. I, don't un I don't understand. The report did not point to pedophiles or pedophile rings or, you know, dozens of people roaming around sort of abusing children. It wasn't that kind of report at all. We wrote what people told us about and all the concerns that they have. So they spoke to us about uh, poverty. They spoke to us about kids not going to school. Mm. young mothers, um, a lack of education for everybody, um, lack of housing, uh, unemployment. When certain conditions like that exist, the likelihood of the abuse of children happening, it's very likely. The neglect and abuse of children is undeniable. Those facts were lost. The importance of the propaganda by the television programs was to create a situation in which the government could act to control those communities. You put up pretty provocative signs in these prescribed Aboriginal areas. Mm. Would you put up the same signs here on the Gold Coast in Queensland? Would you put those signs up in places where there is child abuse? Middle class Australia, working class Australia, white Australia? It's a really good question because what you're actually putting to and pointing to is that we should not discriminate about colour, but we should be actually protecting children, regardless Absolutely. of where they are. Yes. Let me tell you, I live here on the Sunshine Coast and there is child Sorry, sexual Sunshine abuse here. That's quite okay. Department. And right here, there is no doubt child sexual abuse. It's mm. not an uh, exclusive right of one particular ethnicity or one location. Mm. So in 2008, the Central Australian Group of Specialists put together a report around the intervention. And I suppose one of the major things that we, that we found and we wanted to make clear to the government was, uh, was that after 11,000 health checks of children that had been performed, there was only one child who was found with a health condition that wasn't otherwise known. Mm. And that wasn't a sexual assault case. So if, if Mal Brough wants to dismiss this report written by experts in their field working on the ground, then I suppose he can, but it, his dismissal is false. Why did Gregory Andrews appear anonymously? This is a man who, in effect, worked for you. Why did he appear on the ABC's Late Line program calling himself, or them calling him, an anonymous youth worker. Why did that happen? I don't know why you would put the question to well, he, me, because didn't I he had not, absolutely... Didn't he brief you before that? No. He didn't brief you? No. The parliamentary record tells a different story. Brough told Parliament that Gregory Andrews provided the information of his notes to my office. Now, the program used footage showing Aboriginal children sniffing petrol, didn't it? It did. They weren't from Mutajulu. Uh, the, the petrol sniffing footage came from a community called Docker River, which is hundreds of kilometres away. It's like but it was represented as from Mutajulu. Members of the Mutajulu community 
complained to the ABC about the programme. An inquiry confirmed that footage claiming to be from Mutajulu had come from elsewhere. Disguising a government official as a youth worker was called unfortunate, but justified because he said he feared for his safety. The complaint was rejected. The ABC declined my offer to be interviewed for this film. The people of Mutajulu and others complained to the ABC and an internal inquiry of a kind was held yes. and uh, which announced that the program was exonerated. What, what's your view of the process that exonerated the program? Well, I think it's, uh, it's farcical, really. It's a bit like the police investigating their own behaviour. It may be a perfectly proper process internally to do that, but then to rely on it uh, as, as exonerating the, uh, the, the program makers seems to me to be going a step much too far. When this was exposed, did you get an apology no, from the no, ABC? We had no warning, no apology, nothing. And we, I think we left hanging in the air as though we're still guilty. One of the facts that saddened uh, the members of the Murdujulu community was a failure of the media to recognise that the extremely lurid allegations that had been made against them mm. were false and were found to be false by the Australian Crime Commission. No one ever uh, took the time to clear the name and the reputation of the Murdujulu community. Again, I say, the Australian Crime Commission, which you gave special powers to, investigated and found no evidence. This is just simply incorrect. And he completely, completely annihilated us in what he did. That intervention was completely, disgustingly wrong. I, I certainly accept that the intervention was wrong-headed, was stupid, I said it at the time, I maintain that point of view. It was based on a deception, wasn't it? Uh, well, more than that, it was based on a lie. Good. What was the lie? Well, the lie was that basically, to put it, cut it short, that Aboriginal men mm. were basically all child molesters. I mean, we've got a lot of racist policies in our past, but this one was mm. the mother of them all. And in order to launch that policy, uh, the federal government, with the assistance of the opposition, the Labor Party at the time, uh, suspended the Racial Discrimination Act in order to bring it in. And there is only one reason why you suspend a Racial Discrimination Act, and that is if you intend to do something that's racist. Uh, and both parties admitted it was racist. The United Nations has branded it racist, um, but they did it anyway. I'm damn sure if, say, South Africa had proposed to introduce similar legislation there, there would have been absolute outrage in the rest of the world. And yet here in Australia, we can do it, get away with it, and nobody seems to think that there's anything inherently wrong with it. That's the bit I don't get. What is the point of imposing something like this on you? I find it extremely suspicious that, you know, I remember a few years before the intervention was placed in Central Australia, watching huge helicopters fly over our, our homeland in, with these massive, big, I don't know what they were, I can only assume they were looking for minerals. And they just fly over, it's like watching a film from outer space, these helicopters flying over with these big massive antenna-like things hanging from them. Then, you know, a few years later, the government comes, you know, crashing into the Mordujulu community to crash, to sort of ob obliterate these pedophilia rings mm. that actually weren't there. And then they move, then they bring in the intervention and, it, and then amazingly they find this huge amount of uranium and precious soils in Central Australia. And it, it, it all coincides around the same time and I, I, you know, I'm, people might think I'm being a bit paranoid, but you can't help but be paranoid when all, all of those dots are sort of connecting to each other. In 2007, a campaign called Top End Secret 2 was launched by the Northern Territory government to explore for new mineral deposits. According to an industry survey, the Northern Territory is the new frontier of Australian mining. <laughs> 